Welcome to Flash Tracks Woodworking. In today's episode, we'll be making this game that I call a marble run. You may have seen these kinds of games around. The idea being you have this maze and you're trying to navigate this marble through the maze without falling into any of the pits along the way. I'll be using this Shark 2 CNC machine that you see here to my right. And I designed the game to fit sort of a natural pose. So it's about 16 to 17 inches wide, 12 to 13 inches tall, and has these handles oriented at about 45 degrees, which is a fairly natural fit for holding in front of you to play the game. It even has this little cutout at the bottom. So even though I made the game for my grandson who will be celebrating a seventh birthday soon, it has this cutout that let's just call that a uh, ergonomic grandpa cutout. No need to say more about that. So with that, let's get started on the project. I'll begin the project by finding a suitable board that is 15 inches wide by 13 inches high. I'll take this oak board and sand it with 120 grit sandpaper using an orbital sander. After the 120 grit sanding, I'll change over to a 220 grit pad and sand until smooth. Next, I want to raise the grain, so I'll get some water and I'll wet the board in order to raise the grain. After it's dry, I'll go back and sand with the orbital sander again with 220 grit sandpaper. Now that the board is prepared, let's have a look at the layout. I'll be using VCarve desktop to do the design work. First, we'll bring in the outer boundary, uh, see what that looks like. The idea here being that um, I'll have uh, sort of an overall elliptical pattern, a couple areas here on the side to hold the handles, and a little cutout here facing the operator of the game. Within that boundary, I've laid out a channel that I want the marble to follow as we go around the game. And then, of course, we don't want to make it too easy, so added some holes or pits here that if you don't navigate correctly, you'll fall into these spots. Obviously, the overall objective to go all the way around. And then I laid out a little path here just to sort of make sure that there is a there is a way to get through the game without actually falling in any of these holes. So we'll erase that path. And I wanted to add some numbers to the game uh, to see uh, in case you want to keep score and see how far you've gotten through the game. So I've numbered each of those individual holes. Now that those are numbered, I can create toolpaths. And the first toolpath will be one for the laser accessory, which will go in and it will uh, laser in all of the hole numbers as well as the start and finish indication and the logo for the project. With the tool paths in hand, it's time to head to the shop, power up the CNC controller, raise the router to remove the safety block, clamp the board, locate the zero at the board center with the engraver bit, then I'll clean the laser and the air passages with a Q-tip and some cleaner that's used for eyeglasses and such. After the laser is clean, we'll mount the laser in the collet, in the chuck, and then set the laser height with a little stick that I have that is a tenth of an inch thick that I know gives me the proper offset between the laser and the work. Then. I'll arm the laser and we'll prepare to laser text in the whole numbers and the text on the CNC machine. At the end of the laser operation, we will have completed this much of what we had on our original drawing. The next actual routing step will be to put in this maze or path for the marble to follow. And that'll be a routing operation in the wood. We can have a look at the tool pass that our router bit is going to follow in order to do all that cutout, and perhaps even better to uh, have a look in 3D to see what this path is going to look like. So there it is, and we'll get started on that. Now back at the CNC machine, I'll select a quarter inch bit from the tool holder, which was the subject of my previous video, 
And since I've already zeroed the X and Y in the previous operation with the laser, now I just need to zero the height for the quarter inch router bit. Next, I'll carve the channel with the CNC. I'll use that quarter inch bit, make three passes, one eighth of an inch deep each for a total of three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch seems like it's going to work pretty well for a marble, which has a nominal diameter of about a half an inch. The next step is to machine the marble holes, pits, or traps. I'll use the same quarter inch bit, start at 3 eighths of an inch deep where I left off with the channel, and then go another quarter inch deep to create the pits. I want to make them deep enough to trap the marble, but not so deep that it's going to be difficult to extract the marble to begin another game. And now in the final routing operation on the board, I will cut out the boundary with the same quarter inch bit at a fairly conservative 30 inches per minute, eighth of an inch deep on each pass, and just over one inch deep for the board thickness. I'll leave some tabs to keep the board secured as usual. After a quick cleanup of the chips missed by the boot, at least it slowed them down. Here's a look at the project so far, located over by the bench vise, where I'm gonna use a flat file to clean up those tabs that we left in that final boundary cutting operation. The marble run game could be played by bending your wrists in order to hold the board flat while you're playing, but I decided to add some handles oriented at about a 45 degree angle with a one inch opening here that would allow you to be more comfortable while playing the game. So here's what the uh, drawing looks like in 2D. If we head over to 3D, we can see the completed handle here being rendered, and this is what we'll now cut out on the CNC machine. Just as in the case of the main board, I'll need to file some tabs after the handles are completely cut out on the CNC machine. I'll also actually add the roundover using a router table with the roundover bit since I have to access both sides of the handle anyway. There's one other thing you may have noticed and that is in these handles shown here, I don't have the full cutout done yet. Kind of forgot to add that little extra notch in the back so I went in and added that later. And I also decided a little after the fact that I would add the attachment holes for the screws with the CNC rather than doing them manually. In this step I'll be pre-fitting the handles to the board even though I'll be taking the back apart to do the finish work. I've already got the pilot holes from the outside and I'll put a special bit in here that has a eighth inch drill bit and it also has a countersink that will countersink the outer handle and also provide the pre-drilled hole for the screws. While I had it in this configuration, I really couldn't resist seeing if I could get the marble all the way through the maze. It turns out it is possible, but it's not super easy, which is kind of what I was going for. I didn't want this to be too easy that you know you'd make it through and then kind of be done with the game so it does provide enough challenge but it is also possible to complete the game a little disclosure is in order here i've speeded this clip up a bit and it was not my first try now that i'm satisfied with the game's operation i'll take it back apart in order to do the finish work i have selected this watco butcher block oil not because they're a sponsor, I wish, but because I like the way it brings out the grain, it darkens the wood just a little bit like a light stain, and it leaves a protective finish. I'll use a cloth for the top, the channel mezzanine layer, and the back, and I'll use a brush to ensure that I've got coverage down in the traps. After I've got everything covered, I'll place it on a rack to dry. Now that the butcher block is dried, it's able to reattach these side handles and have also added a logo on the back of the game. One thing I've also done is to create a set of five of what I'm going to call handicap pegs. The idea behind the handicap pegs is that there might be certain areas of the game that are difficult to navigate at first. So for younger hands or let's say two different age children are competing you could use these pegs to change the difficulty level of the game. So with that, the project is done. I'd like to wish my seven-year-old grandson a happy birthday and wish him good success with the game. For all of you watching out there, 
uh, like, subscribe, leave me a comment if you wish. And then here at the end, you'll see a couple of videos pop up on my left side. Uh, if you like this project, you might like to see some of these other videos as well. So with that, thanks for watching Flash Tracks Woodworking. We'll see you again next time.